Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Sam Cox and I'm the head of school here at Caldwell Academy. As a veteran myself, I'm especially proud to have you join us. We are truly blessed to have each one of you here in our midst this morning. And I hope that our program will be meaningful to each one of you. Your service to our nation is something we value greatly here at Caldwell, and it is our humble pleasure to honor you this morning. We have an empty chair in front of me on the first row on the floor this morning in honor of the Honorable Harold uh, Howard Coble, who passed away last weekend. Congressman Coble attended our Veterans Day service for many years and spoke on several occasions. In addition to serving our country and our district as a U.S. Congressman, he also served in the U.S. Coast Guard and retired from the Coast Guard Reserves. I think it only fitting that we honor his memory and service to our nation this morning. I would also like to recognize this morning our World War II veterans who are in attendance with us today. And as far as I'm aware, I believe we have at least two, uh, perhaps there are more. I invite all of our World War II veterans to stand if able so that we might recognize you. While we thank all of our veterans, we especially thank our World War II veterans for your service as members of the greatest generation who helped preserve freedom for the rest of us. So thank you for your service and thank you for coming this morning. At this time, please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, O God of all nations, you are our strength and our shield a very help in time of trouble. We give you our humble thanks today for the devotion, courage, and valor of all those who have served our nation in uniform. For those who fought for freedom, for those who have laid down their lives for others, for those who have borne suffering, and for those who have brought their best gifts to times of need, Father, so that we might live in peace. On our behalf, O oh God, many have entered into danger, endured separation from those they love, labored long hours and borne hardship, both in war and in peacetime. Lord, in your mercy and love, we thank you for their service, for their sacrifice, and for their lives. Give to us grateful hearts and a united will to honor these men and women and hold them always in our love and our prayers until your world is perfected in peace and all wars cease. And may all of our veterans, especially those still serving in harm's way, be comforted by God's promise that I will be with you I will not leave you or forsake you. It is through Jesus Christ, our Savior, I humbly pray. Amen. At this time, please join me in standing for the presentation of our nation's color, colors and remain standing as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance and for the singing of our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. On July 8, 1776, tradition tells of the Liberty Bell ringing out from the Tower of Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, summoning everyone to hear the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence by Colonel John Nixon. The Pennsylvania Assembly ordered the bell in 1751 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of William Penn's 1701 Charter of Religious. Rights and freedoms are what this bell symbolized when it arrived on September 1st, 1752. It was not hung until March 10th, 1753, when the bell cracked during its first test ring. The bell was melted down and recast in an attempt to make it less brittle. The bell was then, the bell was then placed <coughs> The bell was then raised again on March 29, 1753, and upon its ringing, no one liked its tone. It was once again melted and recast. Raised on June 11, 1753, its tone was still displeasing to most listeners. Believe it or not, the bell was decided to be replaced with a brand new one from England. When it arrived, it was agreed that it had sounded no better than the current Liberty Bell. So the Liberty Bell stayed in the steeple and the new bell was placed on the state house roof and attached to the clock to sound the hours. When the British occupied Philadelphia in 1777, all bells were removed from the city and would most likely be melted down and used for ammunition. The Liberty Bell was hidden in floorboards of a church in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Though the bell does not physically ring today, it is displayed for all to see and its song is still heard declaring freedom and independence in this country of the United States of America.
morning. My name is Sage Avis, and I'm a junior here at Caldwell Academy. Today, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize a special group of individuals who serve quietly with great patriotism and strength. If you are a spouse, widow, or a widower of a veteran, would you please stand at this time and remain standing? Again, if you are a spouse, widow, or widower of a veteran, would you please stand at this time and remain standing? Our seniors would like to present you with a token of our appreciation to thank you for your courage and commitment and for many unseen sacrifices you have made to support your veteran. You are receiving a small print from artwork that was done by one of our students, Natasha Dodd. She did a beautiful job and I hope you enjoy it. At this time, I would like to read The Silent Ranks, Author Unknown. I wear no uniforms, no blues or army greens, but I am in the military, in the ranks rarely seen. I have no rank upon my shoulder, salutes I do not give. However, the military world is the place where I live. I'm not in the chain of command, orders I do not get, but my spouse is the one who does, this I cannot forget. I'm not the one who fires the weapons, who puts my life on the line, but my job is just as tough. I'm the one that's left behind. My spouse is a patriot, a brave and prideful American, and the call to serve our country not all can understand. Behind the lines, I see the things needed to keep this country free. My spouse makes the sacrifice, but so do our kids and me. I love my other half, who serves without expecting any thanks. I'm known as the military spouse, who serves among the silent ranks. Thank you, you may be seated. Mr. 
queen. We liked the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Do what the buglers command. They're in the army and not in a band. This is the army, Mr. Brown. Baby went to town. She had you worried, but this is war, and she won't worry you anymore, more, more. No, she won't worry you anymore. <laughs>
In keeping with our tradition here at Caldwell for our Veterans Day program, we always invite a guest speaker who is a veteran. And um, our speakers have ranged far and wide from different branches of the service as well as different walks of life. It is my great pleasure this morning to introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. Craig Childs. Dr. Childs is the pastor emeritus at the Kirk Church here in Greensboro retiring from full-time ministry in January of this year. He has been a pastor for over 30 years, serving four different churches, and he has been married to his wife, Jamie, for over 40 years, and together they raised four children, and they currently are the proud grandparents of four grandchildren. Dr. Child also served Caldwell Academy as a member of our board of directors for four and a half years, and he was a Caldwell parent. Uh, one of his children, Allie, was the Caldwell valedictorian in the class of 2006. He is the author of two books, one on parenting and one on suffering, uh, both of which he knows well. Craig is also a veteran, having served as an Army infantry officer from 1975 to 1979 serving as both an infantry platoon leader and as a company executive officer, serving in both Germany and here stateside. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Childs this morning. I'd like to start with something that the Lord says to us in his word that kind of sets the stage for how we understand Veterans Day. Uh, the Lord would say in Ecclesiastes, a passage that many of you may recognize, there's an appointed time for everything. There's a time for every event under heaven. Time to live, time to be born, time to die. And then there's a laundry list. The very last thing on that list is this. There's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. And our Heavenly Father understands that in our fallen war world, we have a time for war. And that's why we have armies, that's why we have navies, that's why we have sailors and soldiers and marines and airmen and coast guard, and I hope I didn't leave one of them out, but we have those guys. We call them veterans after they serve. Um, now, I'm going to talk today about just two things. Unfortunately, I was in the Army, so I, I talk a lot about soldiers, but everything I say about soldiers is true of sailors and airmen and 
Coast Guards and Marines. Uh, just two things that I want to share with you today. The first is the spirit or the character of the true soldier, the true sailor. And the second is the calling of the true soldier, the true sailor, the true airman. First, uh, the, the character or the spirit. And I want to suggest to you that the spirit of the veterans that you honor today is the spirit of a warrior. And I want to talk about that just briefly. Um, not every soldier, not every sailor, not every airman and corpsman is a uh, Marine is necessarily a warrior. When I had soldiers show up in my unit in Germany, I sat down with all the men who showed up and I said, I have three kinds of people in my unit. I have the druggies and the warm bodies and the warriors. And the druggies didn't stay long. They, they never were available to do anything. If, they, if you had a mission, they didn't show up. If you had an assembly, they weren't there. They were at the AG, they were at the lawyer because they were in trouble, they were at the doctor, uh, and they didn't stay long. The warm bodies uh, were probably maybe only 10 or 15% of our folks, and they would show up, but they were there only in body. Their heart wasn't there, their spirit wasn't there. Um, this is probably the Beetle Bailey kind of guy, you know, and the corporate corporal tells him to build a parapet or a foxhole, and as soon as the corporal walks away, he sits down and takes a nap for three hours. But the great majority of men who showed up in my unit were warriors. And I want to tell you what I think that, that means to be a warrior. It's not, unfortunately, what we have an image today of somebody who's a bloodthirsty, love war, Viking kind of, you know, heavy duty killer thrives on it, stuff that's on, what's that, Xbox and the movies. Uh, a warrior, in my mind, is someone who may actually prefer peace, may actually prefer not to have to fight, may prefer not to have to take a life. But the warrior is the person that when it's necessary, they rise to the occasion. When it's necessary, they stand up and are counted. When it's necessary, they're willing to pay the price. When it's necessary, you know, you sang about the soldiers and you guys gave a fantastic uh, speech of Patrick Henry. But those people, when it was necessary, they were willing to pay the price. In the army, we had an expression, they were willing to dip. Nobody wanted the command to dip. Uh, anybody, that might have just been an army thing in the 70s. Anybody know what the dip is a reference to? It was the command that at all cost, hold your position, even if you have to die in place. And the warrior spirit says, I will. I will do what is necessary to protect my country, even if it requires me to die. In some respects, what the warrior represents is the same spirit of our Savior, who was willing to pay the absolute price so that those of us who know him have the freedom and the forgiveness. That's the spirit of the warrior. One of my favorite movies, some of you may have seen it, is, um, is Pearl Harbor. Have any of you ever seen that show? It's okay. To, it's not a sin to raise your hand when I ask questions, okay? Um, it, there's lots of things in that show that I like, but there's a scene that always uh, gets to me. It's the scene after World War, after Pearl Harbor, and they have, uh, I think it's Doolittle's, the Doolittle Raid, which was a, they called the the tip of the spear it was to communicate to the Japanese that they were not, uh, they were not ungettable. And uh, there's, a, there's a scene in the movie where they're on the aircraft carrier and they've got all the airmen and the pilots lined up and the, um, the commander, Doolittle, do says, guys, this basically is a suicide mission. Look to your left and right. Most of you aren't coming back. And it's okay if you don't want to go. 
But if you want to go, there's this line drawn right down the aircraft carrier, and there's like 200 sets of boots, and the, and the camera focuses on it. He says, but if you want to go, if you're willing to go, step over the line. And for me, it's an extremely emotional scene because every set of boots, everyone, steps over the line. My wife will tell you, I usually get choked up and say something like, those are the days where men were men, you know, which is sexist, I realize, I don't mean that, but that's the spirit of the warrior that says, if it's necessary, I will give it all to defend my country. That's what we honor here. We honor that willingness. Second thing I want to draw to your attention today is what I call the calling of the true soldier, the true sailor, the, the true warrior. And this may sound simplistic, but the calling of the soldier and the sailor and the airman and marine is basically this, to stop the bully, to stop the bully. If you think about warriors in the Bible, there were a lot of warriors. That, you know, there was Moses was a warrior, and Gideon was a, a warrior, and Joshua was a warrior, Caleb, David. David, you know, we all remember that story. Even before he was a king, he was a little boy, and he, he went to visit the armies of Israel to visit his brothers, and uh, he found a bully on the battlefield. What was his name? Goliath, huge bully mean, ferocious, and he was taunting the Israelites, and they were scared to death. By the way, warriors can be scared. When death faces them, they can be scared. But this group was frightened, and what did David do? He said, I'm not going to let the bully stand, and he took the bully down. And the nature of the veterans that are honored here today are the ones who said, I will I will stop the bully. I don't know if you've ever had, I don't know if you've ever were bullied. Most of us don't want to admit it, but I had an occasion when I was a senior in high school that there was this really bad bully in our school. And he was a big guy. Uh, and he, today we'd call him a gang leader, but back in those days they were just hoods, you know, with the leather jackets and, and he had followers like four or five, but he himself was big. He was the biggest boy in school. He was older. He's like 19 or 20, about to age out. Uh, he, he literally was as mean as they come. Name was Mark, and he hated athletes. And I don't. Nobody knew why. Somebody says because a coach fired him in the fifth grade from the football team because he had a bad attitude, and it just got worse. And he he literally he and his buddies picked on athletes to try to hurt them, and did so. And I had one occasion where I was in the, uh, as a senior, I was in the, uh, the hallway alone, and I was a little bitty guy. I was a center, but I was 150 pounds, little guy. And I got stuck in the hallway alone with Mark and his cronies, and, I, and they came after me. And just before they got to me, the nose guard of our football team, who was himself about 270 pounds, and a personal friend of mine, <laughs> came around the corner put his arm around me and said, Mark, you, you want a piece of him, you're gonna have to go through me. And Mark knew better than to mess with Bo. And I really felt delivered, I mean, literally. And it produces uh, an elation. Uh, in some respects, the warrior stands between us and the bullies, much like Christ stands between us and the dark one and delivers us stops the bully's power over it, gives us freedom and forgiveness. But the men and women in here have said, I will fight to stop the bullies. Um, you know, in the 1900s, in the 1930s, in the 1940s, there were some bullies. Um, I really did not think we would have any World War II veterans. I am just excited you, you are here. Because there were three bullies, one in Japan, one in Germany, one in Italy, and we sent warriors over there and said, no, you can bully no more. A little later, there were some bullies in Asia. Uh, we called them communists, and, and they, they wanted to take over everything. You might, those of us who are older might remember Khrushchev standing up at a podium, taking the shoe off, 
pounding it and saying things like, we will take over the world. And they tried, and we sent warriors to places like Korea and Vietnam to stop the bullies. There's bullies in the Middle East. Uh, many bullies, but one that we know of, Saddam Hussein, and we sent warriors over there. They said, we're not going to let you do that. Desert Storm, Desert Shield, I think I got those right. And, and there are people who lived and died to stop the bullies over there. And then there's 9-11. I mean, there's not any picture of a bully any vicious than that. We're going to take vulnerable innocent citizens, not soldiers, citizens, and we're going to blow them up. And we sent warriors over there and said, Bin Laden, you can't do that. That's what warriors do. They stop the bullies. I had a, an illustration I was going to do, but there wasn't enough space to do it. But I, I'm going to ask, let me ask you young men here just to stand. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. Don't panic, but just stand. But there's, there's another set of bullies that exist today, and you and I have seen them on the TV, uh, and they love to find young men that they can capture, and then they love to have them come and tie their hands behind their back and to kneel and put hoods over their heads. And we have children watching that are too young, so we're not going to talk about what they did, but it's fiercely gruesome. And we call them ISIS, we call them terrorists, but they love it. They're, they got the power, they've had them kneel down, and they're going to take their life. And so we will send bullies, we will send warriors to stop the bullies. But here's the question, what keeps those bullies from coming here? and having those men kneel down. Because they would if they could. Let me tell you why they don't come. It's because we have a legion of warriors who say, not on my watch, not on this soil, not our young men, not here, not now. You want them you got to come through us. That's what warriors do. They stop the bullies. Thank you, guys. You can sit down. Y'all were really handsome up there. Just want you to know. <laughs> guys, I love America. I love America. We live in the best country in the world. I don't, that mean that we don't have some things that might concern us, but I love this country because we free. But we need never to forget that that canopy of freedom was purchased by the blood of the warriors who said, I will pay the price so that my country can be free. God bless America. God bless our veterans. Thank you. It has become our tradition on Veterans Day to honor each branch of our armed forces by singing a medley of the service songs. We invite each veteran to stand and be recognized as your branch of service song is played. It is our joy and privilege to honor you today. The United States Army.
United States Marines. The United States Navy. United States Coast Guard. United States Air Force. Good morning. My name is Tyler Deaton and I'm part of this year's junior class. First, I would like to thank everybody who's here for serving in their own special way. Today, I will be reading from Daniel 3, 13 through 26. <clears throat> then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then... 
Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said to them, But I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. We're so honored that you've joined us here this morning. At this time, we would like to recognize the veterans who are no longer with us, even many who have attended our program in the past. Please rise for the playing of taps. You may be seated. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you, more importantly, for serving. Would you please bow your heads with me and we'll close in prayer. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, the Lord who fights our battles for us, our victor our ultimate freedom giver, our provider, our protector, our sustainer, our shield, and our strong tower. Thank you that we live in a country that remains free, free to worship you, to study from a biblical worldview, to vote. Thank you for the men and women in this room and those who have gone before us, who fought and sacrificed for that freedom. Those of us who have not served cannot begin to really know or understand what you have gone through. Thank you for the spouses who supported them in that service, who suffered separation, fear, and loneliness with very little recognition. Thank you, Lord, for the many hands and hearts that went into the preparation of this event. Those who cooked, served, created artwork, set up, and prepared for this day. Thank you for our precious teachers who teach our children the meaning of freedom as found in history, literature, the arts, and through your word. Thank you for the founders of Caldwell Academy who began this tradition to honor and recognize our veterans on this day. Lord, may we always be grateful when we see our veterans in the airports, 
at our local coffee shops and grocery stores. And may we have the courage, not just today, but every day, to thank them for what they have done, what they are doing to defend our country. Lord, I thank you for your spirit, for you promise us that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are here among us. And I thank you for your spirit that was here today. I ask boldly for a hedge of protection to be around each person here. Lord, anyone who does not know you here, I pray that they would be touched by your spirit today. I thank you for who you are and what you have done. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. This concludes the formal portion of our Veterans Day program. I would like to thank Dr. Steve Norris for playing taps. Dr. Norris is a Caldwell parent, a board member, and he too is a veteran. So thank you, Steve, for taking time out of your day to play for us. And thank all of you for coming and for your service to our nation. I now invite any of you who would like to, who might be interested in visiting classes. Uh, our seniors will come up in a few moments at the conclusion of the program and will escort you to classrooms if you would like to visit. I know our students would love to ask you questions and hear your stories. Uh, they learn so much from you. So uh, if you have some time and would like to, to do that, uh, I certainly invite you. So thank you again for coming. This concludes our service.